Hello, you beautiful viewer, and welcome to the Vengeful Bakery channel. This is another episode of Shared Library. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Back to Bed. I know virtually nothing about this game. I grabbed it in a humble bundle. It was, uh, I don't know, it looks cool. I honestly am not sure it, the description in this, the Steam page said, uh, Guide Bob back to bed by being his guardian, Sub Bob, his subconscious. Based on the aesthetic of the game and how it was presented in the store, I honestly do not know if there's going to be a cute little storytelling game or a horror game, which probably will make me most vulnerable to its horrific elements. So, without further ado, let's jump into Back to Bed. It said controller recommended, but check this out. I was following my mouse pointer around, which I'm not excited about. And let's go. Rooftop Trouble. Dream number one. Bob is a narcoleptic. Out the window they go. All narcoleptics or just Bob? I assume I'm the green man, sub Bob. Onwards through the dream. Lots of eyes everywhere. Huh, this is moderately creepy. <laughs> Get Bob safely to bed. Point and hold mouse to move. Well, good thing that the audio isn't like recorded backward or anything to make it creepy as all heck. To pick stop off. Okay, we'll pick up this apple here. Okay. Bob turns clockwise. I'm gonna put that there so Bob doesn't walk off a cliff. Bob, also looks like those little footprints are teaching me where I need to go. Or where Bob will go, rather. Dream on. Got him back to bed. Oh, I'm going to do fast forward and pause. Interesting. That's true. That's actually, uh, there's a lot of science behind that, but sleepwalkers always turn clockwise. Oh, I needed I needed to get the apple. Looks like I can go through Bob, though, so that's pretty good news. Let's uh, no, 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 Bob, no, 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 no! Oh, my goodness. Oh, that works. Okay. So they have that little safety built in for me, because this game might even be noob-proof enough for me. It looks like it's basically a take on Lemmings. Good. Beds are good. It's a take on Lemmings where they decided to do voiceover recording and make it as creepy as possible. Is this still going to be a horror game? I don't think so. But let me tell you what. I love it when a game quickly grabs you and sets up an atmosphere and says this game is going to... This is the aesthetic of our game. And I tend to be a fan of these heavily stylized games like this one too. I wonder why it's an apple that I'm re-guiding it with. Oh. So we're gonna let him turn there. Don't worry, Bob. How would I wake him up? I also would like to fast forward. Oh, I just hold down the right bumper. Okay, okay, okay. So then he's gonna walk down here, he's gonna take a right at this chimney, and he turns clockwise. Oh, I actually held right bumper, but it looks like the uh, Y button will do that too. Yeah, that's right. And, oh, he's going to walk across that bridge. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and yes, I did look at my controller to see what that button was. I grew up in the PC master race, and so I actually am not as comfortable with console controllers as other people. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that as soon as we get Bob on to his next stream. Is this game going to get creepier? I was kind of, I don't know. I guess in my heart I wanted it to get creepier. It seems weird, counterintuitive to who I am. That gave me a little bit to get set up, I guess. So he's going to turn here. Oh my goodness. Okay. What in the world? So what are we... 
Oh, I see. So he's in he's in an infinite loop here. And when he gets here, he'll turn back and come out this way, set up the apple, send him home. So here's the thing. Are there people out there who honestly believe that in shooters like Battlefield and Call of Duty and Wartime Fun Piles, that believe that the controller is superior to the mouse and keyboard? More fun, I can accept. But it feels like the reason you don't see cross-console play is wouldn't the mouse and keyboard people just demolish the controller people? Or is that because I was raised to believe that console players were a lesser species? I'm not sure. It's something I think about, and I feel like everyone agrees with me. But that's because I block everyone on Facebook who doesn't agree with me. Okay, this looks profoundly easy, so let's just grab the apple. <laughs> Kevin says it's profoundly easy. That's a good indicator that he's about to get himself killed. Or Bob, more appropriately. But since I am Bob's subconscious, it seems like if he dies, I probably won't fare too well with that either. I'm going to take it right there. And, uh... I'm going to turn around, and we're going to fast forward. Boom! I... I want something more. I want the game to do something else. I mean, the, the little perspective shifts are kind of neat. Let's see, so he's going to go there, and right there. What? Boom. That's like the closest I've had to have like reflexes for anything. And then the apple is a hat? What the heck did that mean? My goodness. Got him to bed. Nailing it. Well, I hope I don't spoil the entire game for you. I hope its runtime is more than 15 minutes. Although if it is, maybe I'm protecting you here, dear viewer. This did come in a humble bundle, so it's a little hard to say what it cost me. And actually, now that I think about it, I forgot to check what its cost on the Steam store was at this point in time. Okay, so he's locked in a loop there, so I have some time to think. Oh no, easy piece. And then, oh no, I'm going to walk him off a cliff. I'm going to walk him off a cliff. No, no, because he's going to go through that door. He's going to come out there. And that, from there, he will, if I turn him here, I'll go this way. That would walk him right off the cliff. That is setting up to walk him. No, because he'll turn there, and then he'll turn clockwise, come back up here, and then he'll hit the apple here. No, no. We want him to go back through the door. We want him to go back through the door. You see? Huh? Huh? Boom. When a game comes at you and it's this stylistic and this weird, I'm realizing just now that I've programmed myself to believe that it's going to have a big epic storyline. Probably one that is sad. Epic was the wrong word. A storyline that is going to be deeply personal and, and life-affirming or, or not life-affirming as the case may be. Okay, hold on. i got to think this through. So he's going to turn there. He's going to turn there. He's going to uh, turn here, let's say. And then he'll turn there. Easy peas. Bob, you've never been safer in your life. Also, what is Bob doing sleepwalking around on top of buildings? Come on, Bob. Always in a hurry. I mean, that hasn't been my observation, but okay. Oh, look at the melty clock! And the eyeball is creepy. Catching stares from the world. <laughs> I bet. I mean, when you sleepwalk on top of buildings, people tend to get concerned. I think that's uh, not something I've experienced personally, but it feels like something that, that is pretty safe to assume. Okay, so he's going to walk that way, he's going to walk off that cliff. I need this here, apple. Um, Bob! 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 Okay, so he's going to turn around. Why did it tell me not to wake the sleepwalker? Is walking off a cliff what's going to wake him? So he's going to go there, he's going to turn clockwise again, he's going to, oops, use those stairs again. And he's going to walk back and go to bed.
Doesn't that voice actor sound kind of familiar to you? Maybe he's Hagrid. <laughs> I really doubt it. Okay. Go come out here. Go a little apple rooney here. Whoops. I don't know. Oh, because there's a little optical illusion of rooney. Oh, oh no! Oh no, Bob! Bob! Okay, this is where it's gonna have a jump scare. Nope, okay, cool. I mean, it's a dream. How many dreams have you had where you're sleepwalking on the roof while your subconscious places apples to prevent you from killing yourself? Like, so many, right? I don't know what to do, man. Oh, wait, wait, here's an idea. What if we send him back this way? Yeah, you're fine, Bob. Just chill. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. This is the easiest puzzle in the world. I'm overthinking this to the max. Oh, I can't put it at the base of the stairs! Oh! Oh, come on, game! Okay, well, since there's evidently no consequences to killing Bob, we're just going to look around while he kills himself infinitely. Uh, where does this go? It probably goes to pick up the other apple, right? No, he sounds like Darth Vader! I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I said that. Okay, so you're gonna go there, you're gonna go there, and kaboom. Easy peasy, just had to kill Bob four times. I don't even need to look. I know he's going to bed. I know what's up. Okay, got these fancy dudes. Why should I? Oh, because he's gonna wake Bob up! And then we'll find out what happens when you wake a sleepwalker. Well, not today, Clocko! Oh! <laughs> I killed the clock. I'm awesome at this game. Oh, wait, you move clockwise. That makes sense because time progresses clockwise. Everyone knows that. How do I. Right there. No. Right there. And it's done. Have you noticed that I'm perfect at this game? Because I've noticed. I mean, you can get it, but you'd only ever be second place to me. Don't wake Bob up. I mean, it told me that before, and apparently waking him up is worse than killing him, because... Let's see. Come on, man. Oh, that was, that was inefficient of me. Okay, Bob. And then you're gonna come down here, and you're gonna go to bed. Oh, whoa! Because he goes clockwise! Oh, no! I'm so sorry, Bob! Bob, I didn't mean it, Bob! I tried! I'm sorry, Bob! Okay, let's think this through. We go there, and then we just need him to there because he's going to go and he's going to turn clockwise and go back there and once he does that we'll put the apple right there. Easy peas. Alright, go to bed Bob. So it looks like of the two options I presented when I started this video, I said this is either a horror game or a cutesy storytelling game. It's neither, but it is cutesy. Um, because the story as such would barely qualify as something I'd read to a small child. I should note, however, that I don't have any small children, so if I'm reading books to small children, I don't know, I'm probably babysitting or something, and I'd just go ahead and read them a scary story. Avoid the clock. Whoa! Okay, two things just happened. First, I used my new perspective to change the direction of gravity, which I'm okay with. Second thing was, uh, the guy said, avoid. Oh, no! Don't, don't wake him. Do you see that terrifying, that's an eyeball in the background. There's an eyeball in the background. It doesn't count as horror, though. I don't think it was scary enough. I mean, look at me. I'm the sort of person who complains about jump scares all the time. Here I am, like, asking for one. So you're going to go... Okay. Die, clock. No? Oh, that'll do it. Avoid the clock. And then we'll go and send him on that little path of the clock's block while we figure out how to get him to bed. 
Uh, so we'll go that way, come out, and we'll go through the door, come out, and then, oh yeah, easy piece, easy piece. So put that right there. Come on, Bob, log on the apple. Okay, and then uh, he'll hit the chimney. I didn't even need through the apple. I wonder if this game is actually legitimately aimed at children. It's like good night moon for the new generation. Because millennials, as you know, none of us know how to read. And so we have to use video games to soothe ourselves and interact with the culture around us. Yeah, he's going to walk off that cliff. Oh, use the stairs, sub Bob! Okay, he's going to come back down here. We're going to put the apple there. He's going to walk out there. And then we'll put the apple there and he'll walk on top of it. And once he does that... Oh, he's going to go to bed. Narcolepsia. The apple has narcolepsia. All right, well, look, that was the first 15 minutes of... Not what about Bob. Come on. Go back to bed. Uh, so let's talk about it a little bit. Let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, I presented no such thing. I... When I looked at this game in the Steam store, I thought I was going to be looking at, like, a, a thoughtful, personal, kind of Bastion-type story because, I mean, it looked aesthetically kind of a little bit similar to Bastion. I know those of you who played Bastion, or Bastion, Bastion, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. But those of you who played that game know this is nothing like that game. Also, I picked up my letter opener that looks like a cool sword because I wanted to show it off to you. That's all. I just wanted to show it to you. Do you like my cool letter opener sword? Um, and uh, I'm not going to lie, I, I think I'm actually a little bit disappointed. Uh, aesthetically, I think the game's very strong. In terms of, is it good at being what it's trying to be? Well, it's a puzzle game with a cool little sleepy time aesthetic. It's kind of uh, got insertions of creepiness into what could otherwise be a children's book. So is it good at what it's trying to be? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comfortably assign this seven strudels. Am I going to come back to this game? I'm going to be honest with you, probably not. Um, unless it's at like some gaming conference where I want to talk about games about bedtime because they've invited me, Dr. Cavan, to come speak about games about bedtime. I don't know what circumstances led up to that being necessary, but there I am. So yeah, thanks for joining me, and I will see you in the next video. Here's a little wink to get you through the rest of your day. Bye-bye.